my name is Jackie and I'm starting my kids yoga class for today. Um, yeah, I hope you will all enjoy it and that you'll have fun during this class. This class is free of judgment and any specific, um, any specific perfection. So please feel free to like, um, just, yeah, feel free to not judge yourself and just accept your body and your poses as is. So for this class, we're going to do yoga on the theme of the word called tapas. Tapas is about discipline, zeal, and internal heat. Broadly, we think of it as having uh, the courage to change the things you can, the discipline to take action toward a goal. Without such drive, there's no change, physically, mentally, or spiritually. Tapas helps us to remember to keep getting on the mat, to keep fighting the good fight. For example, we can't change the coronavirus situation and how it affects us all, but we can change how we stay healthy. By doing yoga, you are choosing to take care of your body physically and your mind mentally. Today, we're going to go on a hike to the beach because it's a beautiful day to go swimming and lay by the ocean. You decide to find the nearest lake hike, I mean, and it happens to lead to a secret beach that nobody knows about besides you. You start walking on the hike and notice so many different kinds of trees outside. So we're going to start our yoga practice with tree pose. Okay, so tree pose is this pose right here, and I'm going to be guiding us through the pose so we can just watch and we can go through it together. Okay, so come to your mat and st stand in mountain pose. Oops. Okay, stand in mountain pose and stand straight with both feet flat on the ground and with your elbows I mean your shoulders down staring straight ahead and then take while shifting one weight on one leg lift the other leg so that it raises above your knee or you can also place it below your knee and you can stay here for a few breaths and then once you feel you're balanced enough you can bring your arms up into um, into your hands together at your chest center or you can raise them up like branches and just be however whatever branch or tree you decide to be, just grow your leaves branches tall or spread them wide and breathe here for a few moments. And, and then once you're ready, you can un release the pose by taking your foot off from your leg. And then we can do the other side as well. So lift the other leg and shift your weight on the right leg. And then if you did the left leg the last time, so, and then lift your left leg onto your inside of your leg and then grow your branches anyway. You can do a different um, do a different branch this time than your other branches. And so you can even be a swaying tree, sway to one side, sway to the other side if it's windy out. And then you can release the pose by dropping your other foot down and releasing them on the mat. Okay, and then, so the hike continues. Um, so, oh yeah, oh, we're gonna also, cause there's so many trees outside, we're gonna start our um, practice, or we're gonna do um, partner pose. So we're gonna do partner tree pose. In fact, cause there's so many trees out on the hike that you decide to do double tree partner pose. So this is partner, tr partner tree pose or double tree it's called. Um, yeah, so to do it, we have to have a partner. So I'm gonna use Medi Teddy. And he's the guy right over there sitting in front of my mat. Okay, so um, he's, okay, so we're gonna do this pose together. So in tree partner pose, both, both partners are gonna stand in tree pose, except the, both partners are gonna do the opposite side. So one partner stands on the right leg, and then the person standing on the opposite side will stand on their left leg. So I'll be standing on my right leg, and Teddy, Teddy will be standing on the left leg. And then place your left, right, left foot for me on the inside of my leg. And then Medi Teddy will put his inside of his right leg, right foot, I mean, on his left leg. And then you can place your hands. You can, um, yeah, grab your, grab the other person's waist so that you can stay together, stay balanced. And then like place your other hand together so that your, your hands are, your palms are touching. And then we're gonna stay here for a few breaths. So breathe, exhale, 
Okay, and then switch the other side so that you get both sides done. So Medi Teddy will go on his right leg now, on stand on his right leg, and I'll stand on my right left leg, and then lift the opposite leg and the inside of your other leg, your standing leg. Oop, be careful and try to balance. And hopefully you could you guys can balance and try this on your own and so and then slowly bring your um yeah place your other your inside arm on the inside of each other's waist and then place your other hand the outside arm on the other place uh, facing each other and place the palms together so that you both are yeah palms are together and then take a few breaths here breathe exhale and then just release you lift the leg down and lower down to standing mountain pose so that's partner tree pose and okay so um okay so you keep on hiking and you come across a bridge that you have to walk across to get to the rest of the hike so let's do bridge pose okay so we're gonna do bridge pose and this is bridge pose, so just for you all to see what it looks like on a card. Yeah, so we're going to be doing that pose. So to get into the pose, um, okay, so we'll just be lying on our back with our knees bent. And then slowly um, lift your, place your, your hands on by your side. And then once you feel ready, you can lift both of, bo I mean, lift your hips so that your your back is arched slightly and yeah so and then lift your your hips a bit higher and then stay here you can look up i mean gaze up for not to like hurt your neck so don't like don't move your head side to side and place your hands on the mat below your back and this is this is um yeah the pose so and then to release you slowly lower down your hips and place your legs on the floor on the mat and lie down so this is how to get out of the pose you can rest for a few moments on the on the mat and then okay so once we get across the bridge we have to do another obstacle so we have to get to another we have to cross a plank okay so for the plank pose we're gonna um do that's this pose right here and the pose that we'll be doing is so that's plank pose and so plank pose i'll be guiding us through it is we place our hands and our knees on the mat and then we slowly um we can place our we can straighten our legs romeo you have to move we have to straighten our legs and then lift our hips up and make sure we're in a straight line our body is in a straight line and we're facing down, we can look down on the mat. Try to stay as long as you like or for a few seconds. And then slowly to release, lower your knees. And then, yeah, do you can do a, um, a puppy pose, which is this pose just to release the back tightness. And then, so puppy pose, you just lean your back and towards your hips and arch your back and stretch your arms forward and then you can come back up. Um, okay, so if you, however, if you want to challenge yourself, you can also try, um, you can try to do double plank, which is this pose. However, um, yeah, so make sure you, you keep yourself like safe during this pose, because if you do try partner pose, um, the double plank, it might be a bit difficult depending on the weight of each other of the partners so for me since Medi teddy is a lot lighter than me he'll be the one on top and so i'll be doing plank pose and i'll just show you quickly so i'll be doing plank pose so it's the same pose as the last one and then Medi teddy will also be doing plank pose so i'll be doing plank pose first so i'll get into plank pose and then the other person does it the opposite side so the person's, the partner B's feet will be on my back and then the hands will be on my ankles. So if Medi Teddy was a lot longer, then you could kind of see that how 
Yeah, so it would just be a double plank facing e the opposite side of each other. Okay, um, and then finally, after reaching the other side of the plank, we reward ourselves with a snack. You grab out your lunch, but wait, you're attracting a small furry friend. A stray dog runs up to you and tries to eat your lunch out of your hand. Now let's do dog pose. So first we're gonna try downward dog. Downward dog looks like this and in the picture. So this is how we're gonna go to it together. Go on your mat, on, place your hands and your feet on your mat and um, kneeling down on your knees and then place your toes underneath, curl your toes underneath your feet and then slowly but um, lift up your hips and then arch your, move your back, um, arch your back so that it's leaning against your hips. And you can do a few rounds of walking dog. So you can lift your one heel up and the other heel down and then one, the other heel up and the other heel down. So you, this is walking your dog and it stretches your hamstrings. So we'll just be walking our dog for a few breaths. And then once you are ready, you can slowly lower down to release the pose, lower down your knees and sit back on your heels. And then we're going to try upward facing dog. So upward facing dog looks like, um, yeah, it looks like Cobra pose. So I don't have the card right now, but we can try this upward facing dog. So if you ever see a dog stretch, some dogs do this when they're stretching, like my dog does it a lot. And so we're gonna place our hands underneath our shoulders. We're gonna start here first and then lay on our stomachs. And then once you get your hands underneath your shoulders where your armpits are, you're gonna lift yourself up and chest up and shoulders down, facing forward, and then slowly breathe and to release the pose, just lower yourself back down and slowly take a deep inhale, exhale. So that was upward facing dog. And then for, um, okay, so for, um, okay. After, um, after we see the dog, you reach the top of the peak on the hike and look across at the view there are mountains everywhere surrounding you as far as you can see. So let's do mountain pose. Okay, so stand with your feet. So this is mountain pose. I just, yeah, so I forgot to show you guys. And so that's the mountain pose. And so we're just gonna be, it's a, just like a standing pose, except we're just gonna be very like meditative and grounded. So just stand with your feet, hips width apart slightly and I mean shoulders width apart and let your arms rest by your side. You can um, make sure that they don't have any weight in them and lower your shoulders down. So press your shoulders down and gaze forward. Make sure you can do a few neck rolls. Like you can twist, um, yeah, curl your neck so that you're feeling your neck is not as tight and then slowly breathe and feel like you're as tall a mountain as Mount Everest, and you're the tallest mountain in the room. So this is mountain pose, and yeah, so we can just, you can just get out of it slowly, and then, um, so then you continue on your hike and find a bee's nest high up on a tree that you'll pass. Let's do bumblebee breath. Okay, so bumblebee breath, um, so you know, you guys all probably know how bees sound when they're buzzing. So we're gonna buzz like bees and meditate on our breath for a few moments. So sit on your knees or in a cross-legged position, however seated position you feel comfortable, and then sit with your back straight and your lips soft. Make, make a few buzzing sounds. So I'm gonna make a few buzzing sounds and we can do it together if you like. I'm gonna do three rounds and, and then we can take a break and do another pose. Okay. Bzzz. Feel free to close your eyes and just focus on your breathing. So 
Inhale. Okay, one more time. Inhale. And that's the buzzing bee or the bumblebee breath. And then, okay, so then um, finally we reach the beach at last. You look across at the ocean and see that there's a little river that connects to the ocean. Okay, so now we're gonna do river pose. So this is river pose for you guys to see. And so it looks like we're gonna be a river. So yeah, so I'll be guiding us through. And this is how we begin the pose. So sit on your, on your butt and place your legs in front of you. Make sure they're straight or if, and you can bend them if you like. And so we're gonna just um, reach for our toes and just stretch forward. Make sure your back isn't arching too much, like hunching. So we're gonna straighten our back and lengthen it. And then slowly as you exhale, breathe and make sure you reach for your toes and slightly lower your back so that you're closer to your legs. As you can see, I'm, I'm not as flexible, so I won't be able to reach all of, like I won't be able to lower all the way down, but I know some people can. So just wherever you are, just feel, accept your body and accept where you are in the moment. So just reach your toes and you can bend your knees if you like, if you, that helps you to reach forward more, or you can straighten them to stretch your hamstrings and your calves and just breathe here for a few seconds. Inhale through nose, exhale through nose. And then slowly release the pose by letting go of your toes and sitting back up. And that, that was the river pose. Okay, so, um, okay. You peer into the river and see lots of fish swimming around. Now try fish pose. Okay. So fish pose, this is the fish pose, and it looks, yeah, it looks kind of like a fish as this is the tail and that's the head and that's the fin. So we're just gonna do this fish pose first. So how to get into fish pose is we'll be sitting on our, on our butt and legs out straight. So it'll be, it'll look the same as in the river pose, the start of river pose, except we'll be um yeah we'll be doing we'll be bending backwards instead of forwards so once you're in river i mean once you're seated position um you slowly bend your your back you arch your back and place your elbows on the mat and then slowly bend your head back and place your forehead on the mat like this and slowly reach your arms up straight so that it's pointing to the sky and this is fish pose, so it looks like a fish, but yeah. So pretend you're a fish swimming in the ocean. And that's fish pose, so take a few deep breaths. Don't hold your breath so that you can still have circulation throughout your body. And then slowly to get it back up, you lower your elbows on, on the mat and then slowly raise your head. And then you can lower yourself into lying down pose and just take a few breaths. Is that that's um, pretty much a heart opener for those of you um, who yeah yeah because it opens up your chest and your heart so yeah it's like facing the sky okay and then you decide to go boating on the river so let's do boat pose everyone okay so boat pose is this pose um, it looks like a boat and it's yeah, so you can be a rocking boat too. Well, I'll show you how to get into the pose. Okay, so we'll be sitting on our butt and bending our knees and sitting up straight. So make sure your back is straight, lengthen, and your elbows, your shoulders, I mean, are down and your neck is lengthened. Slowly lift one leg up so that it's uh, at an angle from the floor and then reach the other leg up and then reach both legs up and then let go of your hands from your legs and slowly become a boat. You can become a, a, a steeper boat and then by lift, straightening your legs and then you can rock back and forth. It's 
pretty hard and, and then that's the boat pose and it's a good workout for your core as well so it strengthens your core which is good for just everyday posture and exercise okay so now um, we look around and we see that there's a lot of other boats around us so now we're gonna do double boat so double boat pose is this pose so how we do it is we do it with a partner so um, feel free to find a partner and then to get into the pose we'll want to um, here let me get Mary Teddy Okay, so to get into the pose, face each other and sit cross-legged or yeah, you can start cross-legged and then slowly lift, place your um, feet both facing each other and grab for both like hands, both your partner's hands and then slowly place your feet against each other's, like the soles of your feet against each other's feet and then raise your feet up so that your hands are still linked and your feet are raised. So for me, it's kind of difficult, but you guys can try it with a person and it'll just look like this with both of your feet. So it'll just be symmetrical and you'll just be holding each other's hands and your feet are touching. So yeah, so we'll just be look like a two person boat and it'll be facing each other. Okay. And then, um, Okay, you can try different positions too with your boat. So you can pretend you're different boats by doing different positions with your legs. And that's how you maintain. And then just make sure to maintain a straight back and make sure your arms are still linked. And then there, um, suddenly in the boat, you feel a hard thump. You look around and find that you have hit a big rock. So now we're gonna try rock pose. So rock pose is um, this pose. So the rock pose will be looking like a rock. Okay. So we're gonna go into the pose first by kneeling down on our knees and then slowly folding over your hips. Make sure your hips are on your feet and then slowly place your forehead on the mat and then stay here for a few breaths. You can keep your hands forward or you can rest them back. Place your hands on the mat and slowly just place your, close your eyes if you like. It's a very relaxing pose and go inside. Um, yeah, and so you can pretend you're a rock and think about what kind of rock you would be if you were a rock, what color, shape, size, and what like texture you are. Yeah, so that's rock pose, and then slowly release by lifting yourself up on your knees. And so that's rock pose. Okay, um, you, you guide yourself in the ocean as you see something jumping out of the ocean. You suddenly, fear starts making your heart pound. Um, you see a triangular fin above the water and think it's a shark. So let's do shark pose. Okay. So this is shark pose and shark pose is, looks like, um, kind of like the opposite of boat pose. So we're going to start by placing our, so we're going to start by placing our stomach on the mat and then lying down on our stomachs and then raise your, um, so the face, face forward and then lift both your shoulders and your legs up. So this is shark pose and you can sway side to side like a shark and pretend you're swimming in the water and that sharks do. And you can even grab your hands and straighten your back or arch your back more. But it kind of, if it hurts your shoulders or your neck, then just feel free to just stay here and then lower down slowly after you feel like you're getting tired and so sharks know what they want and go after it is there anything that you feel that you have a fear you need to face and if so circle it like a shark and scare it away so whatever fears you have just pretend you're a shark and remember the pose and you can try doing the pose if you ever feel like it and whenever you feel scared and it'll help you 
like face your fear, just pretending in the mindset of a shark. And so that's one way of dealing with your fears. And then, okay, so um, it bobs its head up and with a huge relief, you see it's not a shark, but a dolphin. And so we're gonna do dolphin pose now. And dolphin pose is this pose. So we'll be doing, so we'll be starting dolphin pose by, um, we'll be going on our knees and our hands. So place your hands under your shoulders, knees under your hips, and place your elbows then on the, on the mat and make sure your, your um, elbows are below your shoulders. And then curl your toes underneath your, your feet and raise your hips up so that your hips are up like downward dog, except your elbows are on the mat instead of your hands. And slowly um, try to place your heels on the mat or you can place it more forward and then look back at your, heel, at your heels and take a few breaths here. So this is dolphin pose. And then to get a dolphin pose, you just bend your knees and then slowly raise yourself up on your hands and sit back down on your knees. And that's dolphin pose. Um, yeah, so, okay, so you decide to head back to the beach and on the beach, you watch a few crabs fighting each other. So now we're gonna try crab pose. So crab pose is this pose and it looks kind of like a table, which we did um, the other class, if you guys attended. And so we'll be doing crab pose. So this is how we get into crab pose. We'll be placing our hands underneath our shoulders and our heels underneath our, our knees. And then slowly raise your hips up so that you're, you're like a crab. And place your hands so that your fingers are facing your feet and try to raise your hips up so that you're as straight as possible. And this is um, good for your core and also your arm strength. And then look, make sure you look straight, not like sideways like I'm, I was doing because it's better for your neck to look straight. And then slowly you can walk back and forth like a crab. And then walk forward. Okay, and then slowly to get out of the pose, just release your hips to the mat and sit down. And that was crab pose. Um, yeah, so afterwards, okay. Um, you then want to go swimming. You bring your snorkel into the ocean and go snorkeling. Under the waters, you see a turtle. So now let's do turtle pose. Okay, so turtle pose is this pose. So this is turtle pose. And, um, so to get into the pose, we'll be, um, so we'll be lying on our, I mean, sitting on our, on our butt with our legs wide apart and slowly um, to get into turtle's pose, you just bend your knees slightly so that you're, you're, you have a gap between below your knees and then slowly place your hands underneath your legs and grab for your feet. So yeah, just, try to reach your feet and then you can lengthen your legs from there and then slowly just place your feet together so we'll be placing our feet oops so place your feet together and you're like in butterfly pose just your hands are touching your heels and then slowly place your head down and this is this is turtle pose and turtle pose is like turtles use their shells to like escape and hide from the outside world. So if you ever feel scared or if you're feeling like you want to hide and go into a safe place, always know that turtle pose is here for you. So yeah, you can always try that pose with that intention in mind and then slowly release to get out of the pose by lifting yourself up and um, letting go of your feet. Okay, and that's turtle pose. Um, Okay, so after a few hours of snorkeling, you're feeling tired. You decide to head back to the beach. Wait, but you find bits of your leftover sandwich being ripped apart by a seagull. 
So let's all try seagull pose. So seagull pose is this pose. And to do seagull pose, we'll be, um, we'll be, I'll be guiding us through it. So place your, um, place your, um, sit down on your heels and then place one foot in front at a, at a parallel, um, parallel to the front of the mat so that your other leg, and then place your other leg straight behind you and rest your hips on your one, on your, on the mat if possible. If not, you can also try putting something under your hips like a block if you have one and then straighten your hips to the center and then you can raise yourself up in sitting pigeon and place your hands under your shoulders, look forward, and then sleeping pigeon would just be placing your elbows on the mat and slowly raising, placing your head on the mat. And this is sleeping pigeon. And then of course we have to try the other side. So place the other leg straight back and the other, the left leg forward and parallel to the mat bent at a 90 degree angle. And so this leg and then straighten the other leg and then place your hands above, below your shoulders and straighten up and then lower yourself by placing your elbows on the mat and lowering your forehead on the mat. And then to release the pose, just slowly walk your hands up and then grab your, lap, your other back leg back forward into a seat. So that was um, pigeon pose or seagull pose. And so now I'm gonna, um, I'm gonna start by saying a few riddles and we're gonna have to do the yoga pose that where it is answered by the riddle. So the first riddle is, a thousand colored foals stretch toward the sky atop a tender strand, raising from the land till killed by maiden's hand, perhaps a token of love, perhaps to say goodbye. So that's um, the riddle, the answer to that riddle is a flower. So we're gonna do um, lotus pose. So lotus pose, I'm gonna show you guys is, um, so lotus pose is, um, so since I don't have the picture, I'll just um, show you guys how to do it. So lotus pose will be sitting down in um, cross-legged. You can even place one leg foot up on your heel, on your knee, and then the other foot would be on your other knee if you can. If not, you can just stay in seated um, um, cross-legged position and then place your, your thumb and your, your pointer finger together on both hands and then rest them on your knees and make sure your back is straight, lifted up and your shoulders are down. Sit up straight and look forward and breathe here for a few moments. And this is lotus pose and as you can see, it's very still, lotuses are um, they tend to bloom even in the most de um, like drought, um, like in the dirt. So pretend you're like a lotus growing from your from the dirt or from the darkness that you were once in. And so yeah, pretend you're like imagine you're just growing and just keep on thriving like a lotus. So yeah, that's lotus pose. And the next riddle we're gonna do is. Um, so what is, um, now I'm going to read a few, oh wait, um, what has roots as nobody sees is taller than trees, up up it goes and yet never grows. And the answer to that is a mountain. So a mountain pose, we're going to try that again. So it's just standing pose if you guys remember. So we're just going to stand tall and straight and lengthen our body and make sure your both hands I mean, both feet are hip width distance apart and our arms are by our sides. Make sure your elbows are down, you're standing straight and your neck is relaxed and you're looking at gazing forward. And that's mountain pose. Okay, um, so now I'm going to read a few stories to you all and we're gonna do the pose that it says in the story. So we're first gonna try the monkey and the crocodile story. Once upon a time in a forest, there lives a monkey who resided on a berry tree, which was on the banks of a river. So since I said the word tree and river, we're gonna do tree pose and river pose, and we're gonna keep doing poses that I mentioned that are poses, that are yoga poses. 
or you can also make up a pose if you find that you want to make up a pose but so I'm just gonna do tree and crocodile pose so this is tree pose again if you guys remember so just place your one leg on the mat and straight um, and then lift the other leg and balance on the one leg and then lift your branches up so that you're a tall tree and or you could be a swaying tree and so that's tree pose and then remember to do the other side so we'll be placing the other leg on the inside of the right leg and then placing your arms up in a tree and you can be a tall tree or or a little tree and yeah so that's tree pose and then there lives a crocodile and his wife so a crocodile pose we're gonna just do crocodile so this is crocodile pose it says breath because you can try the crocodile breath which is just breathing like in this pose and so we'll be we'll be um lying on our stomachs so this is the crocodile pose so lie down on your stomach and then place your hands underneath your forehead one on top of the other and and then just lay your head down on your hands and just breathe here And then just pretend you're a sleeping crocodile and then come back up and that's the crocodile pose and then one day the crocodile came to the banks of the river so now we're gonna do river pose so river pose is if you guys remember it's um, seated forward fold it's also called and so we're just gonna sit on our on our butt with our legs straight and then um, straightening our back and then reaching for our toes and this is um, river pose and feel free to bend your knees if that's com more comfortable just make sure your back is not as curved or hunched and lower your shoulders and that's river pose okay so after um, the crocodile so um, and rested under the tree the kind-hearted monkey offered him some fruits the, the crocodile came back the next day for more fruits, as he loved them. As days passed by, the crocodile and the monkey became good friends. One day, the monkey sent some, sent some fruits, um, sent some fruits for the crocodile's wife. She ate the fruits and liked them, but was jealous, as she didn't like her husband spending time with the monkey. She told her husband, "If the fruits are so juicy, I wonder how the sweet the monkey's heart would be. Get me the heart of the monkey." The crocodile was not willing to kill his friend. But he had no choice. He invited the monkey to his house for dinner that his wife could, would like to meet him and that his wife would like to meet him. The monkey was happy but couldn't swim, so the crocodile took him on his back. The crocodile was happy that he had tricked the monkey. However, while talking, he blurted out the real reason for taking the monkey home. The clever monkey said, you should have told me earlier. I left my heart on the tree. We must go back and get it. The crocodile believed him and took him back to the tree. Thus, the clever monkey saved his life. Okay, um, we're gonna try one more story, and then, um, yeah, we're gonna do starfish pose at the end. So the next story is called The Wind and the Moon. Once upon a time, there lived two friends in the shade of a rock. So since I said the word rock, we're gonna do rock pose, and rock pose, just remember, as I mentioned, we're gonna go into a little rock. So um, sit on your knees, and then slowly bend forward, keep your hips on your, on your feet, and then bend forward, place your forehead on the mat, and then rest your arms by your side, and go into a little rock. So pretend you're as small as you can be, and that you're still rock on the beach. And that's rock pose. Um, and then the next pose, um, it, would, um, it would sound strange, but one of them was a lion, and the other was a tiger. So lion is um, lion's breath, and if you guys did my last class, um, I did lion's breath. And so I'll show you guys again how to do lion's breath. So we'll just be um, placing our hands underneath our shoulders. and our. Um, so this is like cat pose, but we're not actually hunching the back or, or arching the back. We're just staying in this position. And then we do cat, um, lion pose by just sticking out our tongue and breathing out in a ha, like a ha sound. So this is how to do lion's breath. Okay, so inhale, exhale. Inhale, 
exhale. And you can try to be a, a loud lion by roaring as loud as you can. So we'll be doing it again. And that's lion's pose. So, um, yeah. So, um, they knew each other from the time when they were too small to understand the difference between the lions and the tigers. Thus, their friendship was not at all strange to them. Moreover, the part of the mountain, so let's do mountain pose since I mentioned lion, uh, mountain, I mean. So mountain will just be standing straight and shoulders down and placing our feet um, shoulder, shoulder width apart and then facing forward and gazing forward, I mean, and then placing your arms by our side, relax, and you can close your eyes if you want or open, keep them open, and that's mountain pose. Okay. Um, moreover, the part of the mountain under which they lived was peaceful. It could be due to the presence of a monk who lived under the same rock. He was a hermit, one who lives far away from worldly affairs. One day, the two friends got into a stupid argument for some unknown reason. The tiger said, everyone knows that cold comes when the moon decreases from full to new. The lion said, you are a stupid fellow. From where did you hear such nonsense? Everyone knows that cold comes when the moon increases from new to full. The argument between them became stronger and stronger. Both of them were firm in their own opinion. They could not arrive at any conclusion to resolve the growing disagreement. They even started calling ill names to each other. They thought that like this, they would lose their friendship. At last, they decided to go and ask the learned monk, who would definitely know about the actual answer. Both of them went together to the peaceful monk and bowed respectfully before him. The hermit asked them the reason for their sudden arrival. They put their question to him and said, Sir, only you can answer to this question, to this problematic question. The hermit thought for a while and said, It can be cold in any phase of the moon, from new to full and back to new again. It is the wind that brings the cold, whether from west or north or east. Therefore, both of you are right, and neither of you is defeated by the other. The hermit also said, both of you share healthy friendships since your childhood. It is not good to get into arguments and think about separation. The most important thing is to live without conflict, to remain united. Unity is best by all means. The lion and the tiger understood the message of the wise monk. They thanked him for the kind suggestion given by him. Both of them lived happily thereafter as good friends. The moral of the story is that weather comes and weather goes, but friendship remains. Okay, so finally for our last pose, we're going to be a starfish on the beach. So we're going to pretend we're a starfish, um, also known as Shavasana. Um, yeah, so to get into starfish pose, we'll also be doing a meditation while in starfish. So just listen to me and follow me while you're in starfish pose. So lie down on your back and place your arms by your side and your head rested against the mat and place your both legs on the mat. Breathe and make sure you're all relaxed and that you feel as light as a feather as a starfish. So, okay, so I'm gonna be reading a meditation, a guided meditation, and this is, um, this is the meditation. So, um, breathe deeply and slowly. Close your eyes and go inside. Feel your breathing and let go of everything else. Imagine a place that is special to you, where you love to be. It may be outside of nature, inside a house, or from a picture or dream. Wherever it is, go there now. Notice what it looks and smells like. See the textures and hear the sounds. In this special place, it is peaceful and beautiful. You can. You feel, you feel safe and loved and happy and relaxed. You can feel your heart and know your own mind. You are free to be yourself and you decide who else can come in. You can invite someone you love to join you or you can just be by yourself. Whatever you choose, enjoy some time for you in your special place. So just with that in mind, keep breathing and closing your eyes. And then slowly, once you're ready, Move your move to your side, so lean on your side and rest on your on the side that you decide to choose and rest on your arm. 
and then slowly lift yourself back up into seated position and yeah so um thank you all for attending my class for today's yoga class and um for kids i hope you all enjoyed it and i look forward to teaching again next next week um yeah stay safe and make sure you're all rest well rested and do um yeah feel free to give me um yeah just feel free to give me any comments and i hope to see you again next week bye